Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the next episode for our ultimate guide for Anno 1800. So, the city has expanded quite a bit since our last look at it here. We have a nice population on the island now of 16,000 and a total global population of 20k. Got about 38,000 coming in, almost 39,000, nice and steady income. 700 influence available to us, and I have expanded the city on over this way. We are almost to 5,000 investors. We do have gramophones coming in for our investors now as well. But you'll have noticed that, hey, I'm out of cigars. What's going on there? Well, as you expand your city, especially into the engineers and investors, you're going to run into the problems where you start needing a lot of goods from the new world. You're going to need quite a bit. Our production island over here, a Dungaree, is going to be having some issues getting what they need from the New World. We are low on Kalchuk. Of course, we are running a little low on tobacco as well down the New World. We were buying some to supplement, but we may have to think about expanding that out a little bit more as well. And if we take a look at Flaley itself, now it's going to be a little messed up because I have a beer festival going at the moment. Um, it says I have enough rum. Trust me, I don't have enough rum. I already can, I can tell you I don't have enough rum at the moment. Um, so I am going to have to fix the rum situation. We are no longer getting enough coffee from Madame Kahina. Now, she's only giving us about six per minute. So that is not enough to make up the deficit from what we're producing down there. So I'm going to have to have more coffee. I'm also running low on cigars. And we're going to need several things coming in from the New World to start dealing with this, as well as chocolate. Chocolate is about to become something that Madame Kahina can also no longer supply in adequate amounts and I'm going to need to increase those productions. So today's episode is going to be focused on the new world. We're going to take a look at ways to go about getting everything you need in the new world clustered in as tightly as possible. Still no trade union or specialist stuff, just as a reminder. We're still not going to take a look at that just yet. That is going to be a future episode We're talking about optimization and efficiency in the new world. But for today, we're going to skip we're going to skip that still and just take a look at baseline producing everything you need in the new world and making the best use of space down there. So with that, Let's pop down to the new world and see what we need to get going. All right, so when you are getting ready to try and make some more space in the new world on your limited number of islands you have here, the first thing to think about, the first thing I like to think about later on is my lumberjacks. You do need a fair amount of lumberjacks, especially for your rum production. Uh, if you are making wood veneers in the new world, you'll also need it for the uh, marketry workshop in this region. So you do need a decent number of the lumberjacks, but they do take up a lot of space and space on these islands that can be used for things like farms or housing. So what I like to do is use these. These tiny little islands, you can't do a whole lot with them. You can't fit many farms on there. They're not good for population since there is no um, commuter pier or anything. So I actually like to use these little islands for my lumberjacks. I just put the lumberjacks here and then I will either set up a cargo ship or a clipper and have some speed boost items on it and have it go around and pick up the wood from the small islands and bring it back to wherever I have centralized my production. Don't have rum production split up amongst multiple islands unless you've completely run out of room for distilleries for some reason. You might have multiple islands set up for things like the sugar cane if you need it. But try to keep all of your one type of production on an island together. So all of your rum distilleries need to be on a single island. All of your cigar factories, or what are these things actually called? Yeah, cigar factories. I was right. All of those need to be on a single island. So I want to go ahead and get wood production set up. And I think this island right here is fairly close. This would be a good place to start that. I have seven at the moment. Is that enough? That's not the right island. This is it. Is that enough wood for this island right here? It's just enough, basically. Uh, so I probably want to build a couple more. So let me see how many I can fit. Okay, so I was able to fit exactly seven. And I went ahead and I increased the productivity by 50%. Now, that dropped the happiness down, but since there are no residents on this island, incidents will not actually occur. As you can see right here, no incidents can start in this building currently. So, good, good tip right there, especially for the New World. 
if you don't have any residents on the island and you can get away with just using your free workforce from the expansion influence category, do that and increase the productivity. You won't get any incidents because there is not 200 population. So now I am producing 38 per minute and we only needed 27 per minute. So that is actually perfect right there. That's all I need. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a clipper to go between those two islands and deliver that wood. That's going to let me be able to get rid of all of my, lum my lumberjacks on this island. One good thing that you really should think about in the new world is keeping everything centralized. Try not to spread stuff out too much. Uh, that way you can use the other islands for resource production and send all of that to another island where most of your production is being made via the factories. The way I like to do the new world is try to keep one or two, one or two large islands as my production hubs where my obreros are. And then everything else is resource generation and it's all shipped back to my one production island. So ultimately this island right here might have fewer farms on it and more population and factories. And my other islands will simply be Ornolero Islands with farms on them to feed the production back over here where I need it. So now that I've freed up room from the lumberjacks taking up space on this island, the next thing I need to do before I really start cramming stuff in is consider my oil. There's 20 oil fields on this island. That is enough for six power plants in the old world plus a couple of fuel stations. So that's a decent number right there. Six power plants and a couple of fuel stations. Very, very nice. Um, fuel stations, of course, are with the Bright Harvest DLC, which again, I will say yet again for the 50 billionth time, get that DLC, especially for the new world. We will be utilizing that uh, here in a little while to kind of just show some of the differences in the new world in terms of space. But you want to go ahead and get all that right there laid out. Now, Power plant stuff is unlocked in the Obrero phase. Uh, it doesn't take too, too much. And usually you'll get really lucky and the oil fields are really, really tightly packed. So it's very, very nice. So we're going to go ahead and get our oil stuff set up here. And drag that where I want it to go. So it doesn't take up too much room, but it's still in a good spot for uh, easy access to all the oil fields and everything. So as you are building your oil refineries in the new world, be aware of explosion chances. OK, the new world, as I said before, has very tightly packed oil wells. The more oil wells you have around a refinery, the higher the chance of the explosion. I've got six around this one right here it has a very high fire chance and a high explosion chance. Well, how are we going to fix this? Well, you can do this little kind of... Uh, some people say it's cheating, but you know what? It works. Put a couple of those around it. And you can see it has already gone down to low from high. If I put one more squeezed in here, maybe right about there. Very low. Now it's a very low chance. And I bet you if I do one more right there, now it's at none. And I can probably actually squeeze you right here and it will start affecting this one. Yeah. Now, is this pretty? No. Does it work? Yes. It works really, really well. There we go. Now, is that pretty? As I said, no, it is absolutely god awful, but it works really well and you don't have to worry about these things exploding anymore. So place a handful of fire stations, place one at a time until it gets down to none. It usually takes a few of them and you might not be able to fit everything you need perfectly. That's on very low. I believe it's a 15 tile range. And that's, that's too far right there. We, we, th someone thought it was a 15 tile range, but it seems to be, yeah, it's right there. There it is. So three fire stations and it is on none. You do not need them connected by roads. All right. Don't have to worry about connecting them by roads. Just place them around there. And now there is no chance that these will explode. So you don't have to worry about rebuilding them again. 
So good little trick right there. Now, I did not come up here and claim any of these for the time being. I just stuck with these right over here. This is a ton of oil coming in already. This is going to be enough oil so I can get some more power plants going back on Flaley in the old world. And the big thing I'm going to be using this for is fuel stations down here so we can start taking up uh, less room with our farms. And I'll just kind of show you a difference between the two in just a moment. But first, let's talk about the workforce real quick. So my objective whenever I am doing workforce in the new world is to try and have it as balanced, as close to zero as possible once the island is getting close to being filled up. Now, this island has quite a bit of building space left, so I'm going to continue with my excess workforce. But as the island starts filling in and I have more and more production on this island and I start running out of room, I'm going to look and see if I can start removing workforce. If I have an, ab an abundance of Ornoleros, but I'm not going to be building anything else that needs Ornoleros, then I will start destroying Ornolero homes and replacing them with like factories from the Abreros, and I'll start taking up more room like that. You don't really want an excess of population in the New World on the islands because there's no point. As you can see, even with an island population of 2,200, this island costs me, well, if my mouse will stay up there, costs me 1,300. There are very limited situations where you are going to make a profit in the New World. The New World is not meant to be a moneymaker of any kind, really, unless you have an island with a bunch of attractiveness on it and you have the commuter, not the commuter pier, I'm sorry, the public mooring, and you have that bringing in some extra cash, but overall, the production facilities in the New World far outpace the income that you get from Obreros and Ornoleros. This, or, this Obrero house is only missing beer, bowler hats, and sewing machines, and it's only making me 35. If I supplied it with, with the things it needs, it would make me... Let's see, it's going to be 38. Let's see, 35 plus 8... Plus seven. So 50. It's only going to make me 50 coins. That's it. That's all you're going to get from the Obrero house. The, o the New World is very, very costly. Um, you need a lot of production facilities here, and you don't make a lot of money. So I do not recommend trying to make a profit in the New World. Focus on balancing your workforce so where you have as little workforce excess as possible so you don't need more stuff uh, being taken up such as fried plantain kitchens, tortilla makers, and so on. You don't want as much of that. You want stuff that's going to be going to the old world. So I'm going to show a quick experiment here, and we're going to set up enough Kalchuk baseline to supply two powered-up bicycle factories, and then I'm going to set up enough Kalchuk with tractor sheds just to show the difference and show how much space you can save between using that. So right here, we have eight Kalchuk farms, okay, taking up this space. All right, so that gives me eight per minute, which is enough to supply the two bicycle factories back on Dungaree that need the Kalchuk. All right, now we pause these. And we come over here, and I unpause these two. This is also eight per minute, which is still enough for my two back there, but it takes up only that amount of space. You can just see the visual difference right here in the amount of space being used. We go from this to that right there. Very, very space efficient with the tractor sheds. Now, you can get a very similar effect without tractor sheds, and that is by using trade unions and specialists. If you're interested in knowing what specialists can affect those things, just come over here, and if I can remember exactly how to spell it, we take a look at the Kalchuk Plantation. There's lots of different items over here that you can use to affect those things and increase their productivity. I would not use anything that increases the number of modules because it's going to be more modules than what you would get for the same benefit from the tractor sheds. But I would use things such as Ferris al-Sarami, 
The Miraculous Steel Plow is also very, very good, as well as the Patent Steel Seed Drill. Anything like that that is going to boost up the productivity will give you a similar effect to tractor sheds without having to have bright harvest. That's going to allow you to cut down on the number of farms you need overall and save a lot of space. So there's two different ways you can go about doing that then. So either the tractor sheds, plus you can still use items and specialists on tractor shed farms. It doesn't matter. That's just even more productivity. Or if you don't want to use items and specialists, just do the tractor sheds. Or you're just going to have to take up a lot of space like we've done right over here for all of our caoutchouc. Now, I was talking about getting oil back to the old world, which is the main reason you do want to do oil in the new world. There's usually not enough oil in the old world to supply all of the power plants that you might need over there. So you're going to have to come to the new world to get more oil. Easiest way to do that, once you have everything set up, if you do not have the steam motors needed to build your own oil tanker, Go up to Archie, and he will typically have one or more. In this case, he has three oil tankers for sale. Oil tankers are the only thing that can move oil between harbors. You cannot use cargo ships or anything else. You have to use an oil tanker, okay? They do cost a little bit from Archie. They cost 300,000 coins. Uh, all oil tankers cost five influence regardless. But when you have enough money coming in, the 300,000 is really not a big deal. All you have to do is go in here and set up a click on it to set up a trade route or create a route and create an oil route. OK, either one of those ways works. And then you have to select an island that has a oil harbor. If you try to select an island without an oil harbor, it will give you this error. That island cannot be added to route. No oil harbor. So we're going to select the island that we want, and then we're going to select the island we want it to go to. In this case, it'll be Flaley. It can only carry up to 400 oil per trip. We're going to set that up, and we're going to let it go. Now, if you're interested to know how long it takes to go between the regions, then it's the same method we've used in the past. You're going to let that oil tanker route go for a couple of trips, and then you're going to look in the statistics screen. Meanwhile, in the new world, I have taken some time to reorganize a bunch of our different stuff. You can see that I have taken away all of the sugarcane plantations and I've reduced them down to three. Again, this just shows the power of tractor sheds. We went from having nine sugarcane sugar cane plantations taking up 90 workforce down to three only taking up 15 workforce. Over here on Jirakagu, We've taken, uh, I had, I think, like eight, eight or so over here. We've gone down to only four coffee plantations. However, I have increased the number of roasters up to six. We had now have six coffee roasters pumping out lots and lots of good old coffee. In terms of how much it's giving us, though, it's still not giving us much. It's only giving us 12 per minute, and we do need 15 per minute for our capital island, which leaves us a deficit of three. But at this point in the game, we are getting five per minute. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we're getting six per minute from Madame Kahina. Again, that's on normal difficulty settings. We're getting six per minute from her. So that is enough to make up the deficit. So I don't have to worry about producing any more at the moment. So remember, when you're trying to make sure that you have everything being produced, be sure to monitor how much you're getting per minute from the neutral traders. Again, if you need information on that, check out my game progression guide, which is earlier in this uh, ultimate guide series. And you'll see how much you get per minute from the neutral traders. At this point in the game, uh, once you hit one investor, it is five per, I keep saying five, it is six per minute end game, which is 25,000 global population and 1,000 investors, it is seven per minute. So that's just a really good way to supplement all of that production. I don't need to be producing more because I'm buying enough from Madame Kahina to make up the excess. So if we take a look at our production screen, we will see that we are producing everything we need for back at Dungari or Dungari, however you want to say it. We are making enough caoutchouc now to supply everything that we need from right there. 
And between Flaley and here, we do have all of our wood veneers being produced in adequate amounts that we have to have again. And everything's looking pretty good. There's a few things I've got to double check. Uh, <clears throat> sewing machines are showing a little low because they do want show sewing machines for the Obreros here, but I'm not supplying that. I do need to boost up our run production just a little bit, but I am buying some from Madame Kahina to help supplement, so that's okay at the moment. It looks like the only thing that I'm actually behind on is our light bulb, so we'll have to fix that on our own. So let's talk about a few quick little things about our Obreros before we leave. Again, sewing machines. I typically don't supply sewing machines to the Obreros. Uh, that is just because I don't really find the cost benefit very advantageous. You only get two Obreros per home. It's not bad, but having to produce extra sewing machines and bring them down is a little bit of a pain. You can, depending on your need, I only need three per minute. You could, if you have plenty of money coming in, which I do, I could just buy sewing machines from Archie and bring those down if I wanted to. So that is a strategy right there to supply sewing machines, is just buying them from him. It is rather expensive. They are they do cost 576 per ton, and I need three per minute, so I would need enough to last going between here and my world down there, or my island, rather, in the new world. So if I can sustain that expense, then it's worth buying the sewing machines from him and just supplying them that way. Otherwise, just pump out some more sewing machines from my sewing machine factory and supply those down there. And that would be why that thing blew up. That explains why I didn't have enough light bulbs. Always check to make sure things haven't blown up on you. So you can supply sewing machines through Archie if you want to, or just build more. I typically don't, but if you're one of those kind of people that likes to supply everything, go for it. Now, the other thing I'm going to say, and this is going to be a big, oh my God, I can't believe you're not going to do that. I don't supply rum ever. Uh, not rum, huh, sorry, beer. I never supply beer to these guys. Um, I just don't find it very useful. I don't know. I just don't do it. The only way I ever supply rum to the Arbreros is if I use a particular specialist in a town hall called Gordon the Master Grocer. Okay. Gordon the Master Grocer provides beer and plus five happiness. Again, provides beer in a town hall. So what I usually like to do when I'm playing with my town halls is I make sure that all of my Arbreros are within range or at least 90% of my Obreros are within range of a town hall, and I slot in Gordon. That way, I don't have to worry about supplying beer from the old world. I can just supply it directly from that. Other two items I always like to do in town halls in the new world are items that increase workforce. There's lots of different items that increase workforce. If you want to look through them, again, just go to the items tab and type in workforce needed. And then you can go through the hair and take a look. Be sure to filter by town hall so you can see. So anything like this that increases workforce, of course, that does not. So that's not great. But like Captains of Industry is an exceptional one. If you have the Anarchist DLC, things like the poster right there. Or my favorite is the Firebrand and the Free. This is a really, really good one. Uh, Sophisms. Sophism's Doctrinaire School of Communism is also really, really good. We don't care about the income. This is a perfect item for the New World because, again, we don't care about the income, but that workforce plus 40% is absolutely phenomenal. The New World is also a really good place to do working conditions. Um, you have limited space here, so Pumping out every ounce of productivity you can is really helpful. So any of those items that you can put in that increase happiness as well as workforce is going to be really, really crucial. We will take a closer look at stuff like that when we go through our optimization and efficiency stuff for the new world when it comes to items and specialists and town halls and all that kind of stuff. We'll take a closer look at that at that point. But for right now, we're just using the Bright Harvest DLC to minimize the amount of space needed. We've freed up a ton of space up here for expanding out our productions and our population here on this island. I will be doing the same thing over here on uh, Tampi. We are going to be setting up fuel stations on this island. I typically support all of that stuff locally. As you can see down here on Jarakagu, I do have a single oil refinery with just two oil wells and a fuel station. 
I set all that stuff up locally. It's why I like to always have islands that have lots of oil on it. So I will come over here, bring over the materials that we need, grab some oil over here, and I will tractor all of this right here up. I will. I do actually need some more cotton, and I can go down from probably ultimately 12 cotton plantations to three. It's going to save a lot of room, save a lot of workforce, and make my life a lot easier when it comes fitting in everything I've got to have. All right, guys, and that's going to be it for me today. We went through the new world. We took a look at some of the easier ways you can go about utilizing your limited space in that region, using tractor barns and sh uh, tractor sheds. Uh, we did the silos in an earlier episode. We talked a little bit about trade unions and town halls. I didn't go into full detail on that, but we will later on, of course. But I just showed you how you can go about minimizing the space and making sure you have everything you need coming from that region as quickly as possible to supply all of your factories. I have been slowly changing out a lot of stuff for... Of course, not him. I, of course, the one I click on is not what I'm looking for. I have been slowly changing out trade routes for cargo ships because I am needing that increased speed at this point. Our cigars have been... The coffee is about to be... I'm starting... This is starting to become not enough coffee, so I will be changing him out for a cargo ship as well. I will likely change him out for a cargo ship too, and this one right here. I'll probably get cargo ships on all of those because my population is getting to a point where multiple clippers on the route, it while it's still perfectly fine to do, it's going to be more efficient to include cargo ships now and make it happen with those. So we'll be sw swapping all of that stuff around shortly and getting that fixed. With that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it gave you some insights into the new world and space utilization and things you can do to free some of that space up and make you the best use of your smaller islands there. With that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, take care.